Have you ever dreamt of a world where you could press a button and your homework would be automatically written for you? Or maybe you've been heads down studying and just wished you could ask your computer to write out the answer rather than having to spend hours and hours Googling and looking through your books. Well, there are now lots of AI powered writing apps out there and essentially what they do is they use artificial intelligence to help you write faster and more accurately. And there are also more and more note taking apps that are using AI such as Mem, Notion, Chican and Logsuck. While AI writing apps are incredibly useful for writers and creators to generate content fast, AI note-taking apps are great for noting down new things in general. But just how helpful are they for actually learning a topic? Well, with ChatGPT picking up a million new users in the first few days of launching, I wanted to share with you some of my thoughts on what generative AI means for learning and studying and why you don't want to sleep on AI if you're studying for exams. So hit that subscribe button and let's get going. Okay, so generative AI is a type of artificial intelligence that can create new things like images, text, and even music based on the prompts that you give it. OpenAI is a company that's been working on AI algorithms since 2014, and their text-based AI is called GPT, which stands for Generative Pre-trained Transformer. And this allows for a small amount of input text to generate large volumes of relevant and sophisticated machine-generated content. What's cool is you can give GPT any kind of prompt and then receive a large volume of pretty accurate text back. OpenAI also has an image generating algorithm called Dolly that can create images from nothing and a code generating algorithm that can actually output lines of functioning code, which is pretty wild. What's interesting is that OpenAI is a commercial company that charges for the amount of text or images generated, and its algorithms like GPT get smarter and more accurate as more and more people use it for different functions and it becomes better trained. Now, OpenAI isn't specific to any particular industry or to studying, and so lots of apps and companies have popped up which use GPT or Dolly at their core but provide a specific interface like a copywriting app such as Jasper or a photo creation app like Lenza where you can upload your own photos and get some pretty fun images back, or note-taking apps and learning apps like Mem, Shikan, Notion, and Logsec. So how do those help you? If we focus down on note-taking and learning apps, how can AI like GPT be used for studying and will it help us to learn? Well, AI has a number of really interesting functions that some apps have been already taking advantage of. Apps like Grammarly and Quillbot have been using GPT and similar algorithms to speed up grammar correction and simplifying prose. This is really helpful if you struggle with writing, and these apps not only spot spelling and grammatical errors, but you can actually use them to rephrase and simplify content, which is really great if you're trying to simplify and teach others, or if you just want to optimize how you write in general. Now, one big issue for teachers when creating exams or tests is that actually thinking about the questions and writing them out can take time. If you're a student, accessing questions to test yourself and creating your own active recall questions or flashcards is also really, really time consuming and it's often difficult to understand the right difficulty level to set these at. With things like OpenAI's ChatGPT interface, you can actually ask the AI to write you out its own questions and these will be generated in a fraction of the time. While they're not always specifically accurate, they do save you time and if you're looking to create a lot of questions quite quickly, they're really fun to have a play around with. Now, multiple choice questions are often used in exams as they test our higher order thinking because we have to select the correct answer from a selection of answers that are quite similar to the right one. With things like question generation algorithms, previously it was easy to pick out the correct answer if you input a load of text, but it was actually difficult for the AI to pick out distractor questions which are similar to that right answer. With the latest generation of algorithms, however, this seems to be less of a problem. When I tried creating my own questions, it actually came up with some pretty good distractor questions, but this will obviously be less useful for things like medicine where you actually need to work through a clinical case. The release of ChatGPT with its more conversational text message style of interface has meant that GPT GPT accessibility is now much, much easier. Instead of having to write specific or very technical prompts to get the best answers, you can now have a conversation just like Tony Stark's AI Jarvis. Often, if I'm deeply focused, it can be distracting having to Google and validate explanations to any problems I'm working on. Searching through textbooks for explanations that you can understand can also be really, really frustrating. With ChatGPT, you can literally ask it to explain anything complex in simple terms, a bit like having a tutor on demand 
This obviously has some limitations with the more complex topics like medicine, and you do need to be careful about how accurate the information is, but as an equivalent to a quick Google search, it's pretty comprehensive and it reduces distractions because you don't need to jump out of apps like Notion or Mem to then go into Google or switch your Chrome tabs, and that means that you're more focused on what you're working on at that moment. Okay, if we jump into ChatGPT, we can see that we can type in pretty much anything we like, and then the AI will give us a response. So in terms of learning, what things might we do? Well, we might want to analyze a specific topic just to kind of remind ourselves. So let's say, can you summarize GCSE biology photosynthesis? And this gives us a really nice breakdown and simple explanation of what photosynthesis is if we're studying GCSE biology. One of the really cool things about ChatGPT and GPT in general is that you can specify the language that it uses to output any text or information. So I can say, make it more complicated, make it simpler, make it more specific. And with the chat interface of ChatGPT, I can actually do follow on questions. So I can say, tell me more, about glucose. And this is really easy to use conversational style. Now, another thing we might want to do if we're trying to create lots and lots of active recall questions is to generate them en masse, which if doing ourselves might take a lot of time. In terms of note taking itself, the AI can provide prompts to help you quickly write things and not lose your train of thought. The disadvantage of this is it's not necessarily your own work with the prompts coming from the AI. Another thing that the AI is helpful with is actually summarizing large pieces of text. You can ask the AI to summarize five key things from what you've input already, or from your existing notes, or from lecture slides, and it will do that. The problem here is, are we actually deeply learning, and are we using note-taking in the correct way? Well, as you know, I won't really take any notes. Instead, I'll use active recall questions as I go through a lecture, textbook, or video to write down anything I'm not sure about and to create questions that then test my knowledge. Remember, if we use active recall, it's forcing us to use our long-term knowledge and pull information out to make sure that we understand it and understand it in detail. When I go through things, I'm always thinking, can I explain this in simple terms? How well do I know this? What bits of information am I missing? And then I'll actively go and find this out by diving into the textbook, by diving into another video, and adding to my notes over time. While it might seem at surface level like AI is gonna completely revolutionize note-taking and automate everything, that probably isn't the best thing for studying and learning. And so as more of these apps integrate AI, you need to be a little bit cautious in how you're testing yourself and ensuring that any notes you take are personalized to you, and you're really testing yourself at every step of your note-taking journey. If we look at how note-taking apps like LogSec, Notion, or Mem are actually trying to integrate AI into their existing products, a lot of it is aimed at content creators. They allow you to create a blog post, they allow you to write something and automate this from templates, but a lot of it is geared to that, content and generation of that new information to save people time. It's not really focused on studying. The best uses within these apps is actually around grammar correction, paraphrasing, and summarizing things you might have already written out to again save you time. But nothing here is really going to help you learn unless you're generating questions or you're utilizing it in a way which is really testing any existing knowledge. For example, you might want to ask an AI, write me a question on photosynthesis, or write me a question on biology or explain to me something in biology in simple terms. If you're really struggling with a topic, the AI can simplify and break things down, but remember, you might need to go to multiple sources to really make this stick and pull on the threads to go through that learning journey where you're going from knowing nothing at all about a new topic to really understanding it in detail and then reading around the topic to more deeply understand it. Now, if you enjoyed this dive into AI, I've actually got a number of videos on note-taking apps and how I take notes, which I'll put up here in the end cards for you to dive into. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much for subscribing to the channel. Do hit that sub button if you haven't already done so, and I'll catch you again next time.